What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to explore the topic of how to organize your tests and how Test Junkie can help you in that process. So I think this information will be especially uh, valuable to those of you who are working on large projects where there are hundreds of tests or thousands of tests and if you're considering writing a test framework from scratch. One of the very first things that I suggest you figure out when you're starting to write a framework from scratch is how you're going to organize your test. Just kind of visualize, try to visualize that in, in your head before you even write any code. How you're going to structure your project and how, you, how you're going to organize your test. Now, typically when you look at it, there is a product or a service which needs to be tested and then that product or service has several features and each of those features will be made up of some smaller components and sometimes those components can be reused in different features or across different features. For example, if we look at YouTube over here at the header, specifically at the header of YouTube, we have the header which can be labeled as a feature itself. And we have multiple components that make up this feature. For example, the menu on the left, the search itself, the create new video component here, and then apps component, and so on. Now, as a developer working on this header, for example, let's say I'm a developer at YouTube and I have a task to make some changes to the search. Maybe I'm making changes to the search algorithm or maybe I'm doing some changes with the JS. But at the end of the day, when I'm done with my changes and I wanna push this out to production, I ultimately want to test the changes out and be confident. I want to have tests reassure me that the changes that I made did not cause any regression and that it's good to go into production. Now, YouTube is probably probably has hundreds or maybe even thousands of tests, likely thousands, not 1,000, maybe three or four, maybe five thousands of tests to cover this whole site, maybe more. So if I were to wait for all of those tests to finish, uh, it would probably take a long time. And it's a good idea to run your tests on commit. So if you have an ability to run a specific subset of tests that only test search in this case, that would be very beneficial because when I commit my code, I can kick off the tests for search and I can be certain that my changes did not add any regression issues. So keep this in mind when we talk about uh, Test Junkie as a framework and how it can help in this situation. Now let me show you how the tests will look, the hypothetical tests for the YouTube uh, header will look when we define them using Test Junkie and how we would go about tagging the tests in Test Junkie. So first we have a couple of files here in my directory for this tutorial. Now if you are creating a framework you would actually organize this better than this. You would likely have categories for UI tests, API tests, database tests, performance tests, whatever other tests you have. Each one of those would have its own category. And then under each category you would have different suites. And I would create a directory per feature or per part of a website that the suite is testing and I would organize it that way. That way it's very easy to navigate. 
Now, once you do that, you're gonna start defining suites, and I recommend to create one suite per file, and the way you name those files up to you, I named it header one, and my class is header one. And down here, this, this class is essentially a suite. Right, so this suite is tagged with a feature, and this feature is header. Now this coming from my labels file, which is over here. If I go into my labels, header is nothing more than a string. And if you notice, all of this are just simple strings. Now the reason I'm using variables is you don't want to end up with similar components because if you have a team of QA engineers and developers who are writing tests, you want to make sure you all, you stay in sync and you don't have things happen like this. If you hard code it, this you don't have something you don't want something like this to happen. Okay, or maybe there's a tag that someone would spell it like this, or maybe there's a misspelling. So you want to use variables to avoid that issue so that if someone is trying to tag something, they import the class tag and when they try to type something, they would get a suggestion. Most IDEs provide this uh, suggestions and if they don't have something they need from here, they can go ahead and create it themselves. So this is just something, one of the pitfalls that you wanna look out for. Okay, so feature is a string and a suite can have one a suite can have one feature defined. Now same thing with a component. Here I define component navigation and that navigation is a string. So each test can have only one component defined. Now with the tags, you can see that tags is a list, so you can actually have as many tags as you want. <laughs> Internally, each tag is also a string, okay? So now if you look at, the, at this a bit closer, what do we have here? So this suite is for the header and in this suite, we're testing navigation component and this navigation component is for consumer feature and it says I can be logged out, okay? So this is the, the tags basically define the scope of the test. Feature and component also define the scope of the test, but the tags really narrow that scope down. And I will show you why this is important. So now let me explain to you what the consumer feature is and what the logged out means. So if we go into YouTube, in here I am log I'm logged in and I'm at youtube.com and I have one specific navigation here. Now, if I am logged in and I go into my studio at youtube.com, this is my creators page, I have a different navigation shown to me. So the way I went about tagging this is I have a consumer, fa uh, consumer feature and then I also have a creator feature. So this basically defines the scope of this test. So this test over here tests something for navigation on the consumer feature side, meaning it's something at, at youtube.com, right? something in this navigation. Now, when I go into this test, this test scope is different because it's testing a different navigation. It's at the studio.youtube.com. Now, you don't have to use tags for this. Technically, you could create a different component. You can name your components. You know, one, you can do studio, uh, studio navigation, for example, and then just navigation. It's up to you how you wanna mix and match this. I'm just letting you know what's possible with Test Junkie. So if we go into the next suite, we do the same thing for the search. So remember our scenario with the search. We're developers who are working for YouTube and we were tasked with changing the search algorithm. And down here, we are labeling our component. 
with search and we have multiple tags so we again we have a consumer feature which is the regular search for at youtube.com and this particular feature can be tested out when we are logged in or when we are logged out here i have an example so we are logged in right now we have search and if i'm logged out i also have the same search so the scope of this tutorial uh, the scope of this test is applicable both to a user that is logged in and a user that is logged out now if we go to studio uh, at uh, studio.youtube.com we also have the same component for search but this is now for creator feature and again you could use different labeling for the component itself here if you like up to you and this <clears throat> and the scope for this test now requires the user to be logged in so we, we tag it with logged in now one of the things I recommend you to do is document your tags so over here I have an example of how I would document the tags you may want to uh, include more data into the scope explanation depending on how many tags you have how many components you have you may go in uh, in a greater detail in the scope it's kind of up to you but the goal of documentation here is to describe how the scope of the tests that are executed with this tags with these features and with these components will be affected when each of those tags or like labels let's just say will be applied to the execution of the tests and now let me show you how you can actually apply the um, this scope so there's two ways to do this so we're going to take a look at the CLI execution so over here I already have let me make this a little bit smaller so over here we have a command for test junkie so when you install test junkie TJ gets installed by default and so TJ is a CLI interface into test junkie so you can tell TJ run and then minus s just defines the source where your tests are and then down here minus c is stands for the component and component is a is a list and minus k defines the um, defines the tags that I want to run actually let me it's a little bit more complicated than that so let's do uh, tj run h so we're going to take a look at the help for tj here so we had minus minus k I believe and we had g I think right so for tags so minus k it is defining tags to run if they match and minus g defines tags to skip if they match so let's take a look at that command again so we are telling test junkie to run search component for the tests that require user to be logged in and that cannot be executed while user can be logged out as well so if you run this this is the results that we get we ran five tests now if I run this without the minus G actually ran 10 tests because what happened is we go into the search we have actually 10 tests that test search some of them can be tested whether the user is logged in or logged out and only five of them can be ran when the user is logged in so this is how the scope is affected when we change these flags there's also another way to run the test the programmatic way so down here you see that second approach the programmatic approach so what we're doing is we from the 
header one module, which is this file here, we're importing the header one class, which is the suite. We do the same thing with header two, and we are creating a runner object, and we're defining the two suites that we want to to be in our scope. And the next line here, we say in runner run, and we're telling the runner what to run exactly, right? So we say we're interested in a feature header. So everything down here is reducing the scope farther against this two suites. So no matter what suites we passed in here, the scope will be reduced farther by this arguments here. So we're reducing it to feature header then we're reducing it to component search and then we're passing in the tag configuration which just says run on match any so when any of these tags are matched under this feature under this component the test junkie will run the test so effectively what this configuration means is we are saying run all tests for logged in and logged out users for header for search okay so let's go ahead and run and see what happens so there we go test junkie ran 10 tests all of them happen to be under header 2 and the header 1 suite was skipped entirely because it's for navigation so it, it didn't match now if we change this component to navigation it will run other tests it ran also 10 now we can also say ran all tests for navigation only for logged in users or we can say run all tests for navigation only for creative or uh, uh, creator related features let's see what happens if you do that so now it only ran five tests because there's only five tests for creator creator feature in the navigation suite. Now we could remove the component altogether and then it would run everything for creator feature. See, it did it for header one and header two because now we're not limiting the scope to a single component and we can do the same thing by removing a feature and just leaving the tags in and now that will now we didn't see any change because we only had one feature defined within our suites but if we had more features then the scope would be greater okay guys i hope this video did help you out and i hope you're going to be able to uh, plan out how you want to tag your tests and share your tagging strategy with me in the comments below if you have a good one and if this video did help you out, make sure to like it, subscribe and share. And as always, have a good one. Take care.